I, hey guys, no intro, no gameplay, no nothing, none of that for me today. I have actually a, a pressing issue that I want to talk about and I want to reflect upon and offer words of caution going forward to everyone involved. So, after the 2020 World Overwatch Championship, uh, we hit off season and lots of players are being cut, let go. Um, and issues are flaring up that always flare up in an off season. It doesn't matter what sport you play, baseball, football, soccer, uh, rugby, cricket, whatever it may be. In the off season, everybody starts fighting for their piece of the pie. And in Overwatch's case, we don't have a pie, we have a cupcake. In the NBA, the NFL, and every major established sports league, currently, there's a lot more to fight over than what we have to fight over. And if you look back at the beginning of the NFL, you look back at the beginning of baseball, when you look back at the beginning of the NBA, and you look at the forming of the player associations, the player unions, the coach associations, the referees associations, everything revolved around everybody trying to get their piece of the pie and get their value for what they were putting into the product. I have no problem with this. I don't think that anybody should be deprived of what they feel they deserve. And if there's $100 million in Overwatch, I think that everybody should be entitled to their share of the $100 million, etc. My big issue comes from this. When you start talking of a player's association or a player's union, and I don't think a lot of people realize this because they haven't done research and they're going off of what they were told or they have a vague idea and they don't do the research and they haven't done the research. So when you create a player's association, we have to have a coach's association. So we're going to have a staff's association. I don't, I don't think it's correct to segregate analysts and support staff from coaches. So it would be a staff association. You would have the Owners Association, which is going to be the owners of every major team in Overwatch. This isn't just going to be OWL teams. This is also going to be the owners of every major minor team. So they will also be in their association. In the Players Association, it will not just be OWL players. Just because you're in the OWL doesn't mean you're in the NFL Players Association equivalent. Because of our T2 structure and... We can compare ourselves to baseball. The Baseball League P Players Association covers Division One, Division Two, and Division Three baseball. So we have to cover T2, T3 when we create a Players Association. So one of the first things I will ask you at the beginning of this video is if you are an OWL player making $80,000 a year, are you willing to sit down, not make any money, not progress your career, because of a wrong that was done in T3. Are you willing to stand up and fight for the people who are in T3 and in T2? The contenders teams didn't receive a payout for 6 to 8 months, sometimes 10 months. It's documented, everybody knows about it. No OWL player at any point stood up and said, I'm not going to play until they get paid. Are you willing to do that? Because that is what the association would do. Because it looks out for the invested interest of everybody and gives a collective voice to everybody. So, you might not agree with the association. You might be in the minority in the association. But you still have to act because you are a part of the association. Remember that going forward. Players associations are a double-edged sword. I will be blunt. I posted a tweet about it today. And I wanted to highlight it in this video. I do not think currently in Overwatch we have a player who's selfless enough to throw away their entire career for the betterment of the scene. They would rather leave and go stream. They would rather turn their career in another direction. I'll talk about coaches because I was a coach for three years. 
in the coaches scene, if we were to have a staff association, the only person, and I am talking globally, I am including Korea, I am including China, I'm including South America, Europe, anywhere people play Overwatch, the only person I would endorse for president of a coaches or staff association is Sefi. Sefi is the only person who has shown his colors true and true through the entire duration of Overwatch. He's the only person I would do it. Now, we have over... Every team mostly has three staff. Um, and if there are over 400 teams to 300 teams globally, that means that we have around 2,000 to 3,000 staff at any given time that are active in the scene. Sefi cares more about the game, the players, and everything. And I could endorse Sefi to be our president if we had a coach's staff association. Sefi is probably, again, I will say, the only person I could put in that position. Because he's the only one who's shown that he cares and could do it. The players, you do not have a leader. Your leaders have left. Every potential leader for the Players Association, barring one, which I'll bring up in a minute, has left the game. They've gone on to stream. They've gone on to do variety. And they are now... I'll be blunt. There are people who want their Overwatch career back. And they can't have it back because they made a choice and they have to live with it. I will not endorse anyone who went to become a variety streamer or a streamer after their OWL career and stopped fighting for the players that were still playing. You do not have the right and you should not talk. You should be quiet and let the ones who it actually affects right now be the people who have their voice heard. If you're worried about Overwatch 2 and your potential career in Overwatch 2... Fine, but you do not have a right to talk about the current state of Overwatch if you are not involved in it. I believe that there are people working right now, behind the scenes, talking, using their platforms to position themselves in a position for... to basically wind up on top. They want to get to the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is the way i'll phrase it at the end of the rainbow is overwatch 2 overwatch will see a massive revitalization and potentially could save all of overwatch's esports scene because overwatch's esports has been declining since 2018 2018 was the end of the first season of owl and the lack of a t2 structure and a t2 system that actually worked and the incompetence of the t2 staff and people who are running t2 overwatch shown dramatically i kept supporting the t2 and t3 scene i didn't take paid jobs but i continued to support it and then i lost faith in it it's just not worth it for me but i washed my hands of that and i still care about everybody i still look around and i check in on everybody i told all my players to go to college because it was a safer bet than the t2 system i have three to five players now in the military or in college I have a few others who have taken over positions at colleges, universities. I have a few others who are now coaching teams in undeveloped regions in the Middle East and in other places, and I'm very proud of all of them. But the scene failed as a collective effort. Not only was there an incompetence in leadership, there has been an incompetence in the talent and the supply of product that we deliver. T2 Overwatch, when I left was literally copy-paste. You copied what the quote-unquote best team did. You just tried to be them. You didn't try and get better. You didn't try and develop talent. You just tried to be somebody. So if Surefour's McCree was the meta, everybody tried to be Surefour. Nobody tried to be themselves and become their own talent. And we failed. I've stressed this to everybody. I've talked about it in my videos on my YouTube channel. You have to use impersonation to improve on yourself. You steal and make it your own. So getting back to the Players Association, now that I've brought up the Coaches Association, the Owners Association, and Blizzard, what would the power dynamic be? The power dynamic is going to be Blizzard has the end-all say-all on everything. Blizzard is a dictatorship, but Blizzard understands that they cannot do anything without the players. And they understand that the players can't do anything without the owners. So the hierarchy is Blizzard, followed by the players, followed by the owners. Where does that put coaches and staff? 
we fall underneath the owners. So in this structure, if you had players who were displeased with the product Blizzard was putting out, they could put forward motions, you know, not do things, etc., whatever they felt fit. The common thing in the sports industry is striking. So the players would have their security and their safety. The owners can pull out at any point in time. The owners association is there to protect the investment of the owners and the owners association in my opinion could pull out at any point in time and there are a lot of people who say we could function as overwatch without the owners that is not true if it was true we wouldn't have needed them in the first place um i have had dealings with good orgs i have had dealings with bad orgs i have had dealings with good investment groups i've had dealings with shady investment groups there is lots of stuff going on that you don't understand you don't have the full picture of and you're very volatile which is why I'm offering these words of caution. If you choose to go forward and create a players union and a players association, everybody must defend themselves. So players, if you don't like your playtime, that is an issue with the coaches, specifically your coach. That is not a league issue. If you have an issue with how much the average player's salary is, that's an issue with the owners to be mediated by Blizzard, which is a league issue. You have to understand what each issue going forward is and what power you have with those things. So as a coach, and I'll use myself as an example, when I was doing peak performance, you know, the height of my quote-unquote overwatch career, I was doing 16 to 18 hour days. I was working six days a week and I was getting paid less than my players. And I was doing the coaching for six people on top of picking up other miscellaneous duties and being the analyst. Was that fair? No. But that's for me and the owner. My players should never have to worry about my situation. In a player's perspective, if a player had to put up those numbers, that is a player with the issue of the owners. But it is also a league issue, because Blizzard needs to look out for the invested interest of the product. The players are the product. So if the product quality is lacking because of the situation within certain teams, certain organizations and everything, then that is how you get fined, you get corrected, and players, you suffer from the same thing. You say the wrong thing, you're going to get fined because it damages the product you're putting out. In the case of Overwatch, right now, if I had to put a net value on the entire Overwatch League, I would put it at somewhere around 20 million to 14 million annually. So every year, 20 million to 14 million comes in. That has to pay for all of production, that has to pay for all of the players' salaries, and that has to pay for all of the investment that was made the year prior. So if we have a situation where the product isn't profitable, it's either a marketing issue or the product itself is lacking. And in the current situation of Overwatch, the product itself is lacking. I do not think that the current situation with players being cut is unjustified. And I'll pull this up right now. So this is Liquipedia. They've been doing a really good job of keeping track of who's going where, who's not going where. Liquipedia are our saviors of our history, and they keep track of everything. I've used Liquipedia for a lot of things with my scouting. That's what I did when I left Overwatch. I started doing player scouting for organizations. I do not think that a lot of these cuts are unjustified. I think that a lot of them are justified. I think that a lot of these players did not fulfill their end of their contract and to deliver a product that was worth the league's marketing and the ownership's investment. I do think that there are, and it's always the case, no matter what, one or two players who got shafted because of this. But one or two does not justify everybody throwing a fit about it. There are people who think that their opinion is the end-all, be-all, and they should have their entire say in, you know, everything, and that's not the case. If you think you're this person, you need to shut the fuck up. I do it quite frequently when it's not a topic related to me. That's why I don't make YouTube videos about Overwatch League very often. But when I do, it's about key button issues. I 
going to reiterate what I said at the beginning of the video. Not a single OWL player in three years has fought for the rights of T2 players, has fought for T2 players getting paid. If you can't do that, why do I care about you and OWL? If you can't protect my T2 and my T3 people, you have no right to talk about it. If you feel like you guys want a players association and you want to you know, make this better and stop with all the cutting and stop with all the things that are going quote unquote wrong with the product and the vision you guys have for what we're delivering, more power to you. But you have to have accountability on your end. And accountability is something that we do not currently have in Overwatch because we are swayed by public opinion. There are people, I will be blunt and I will call out Huck right now. Huck has delivered players to the league. He has delivered multiple losing seasons. He has not found a single shred of anything for the craft group outside of maybe profitability on selling players. Huck has probably the worst record as a general manager, yet he is still there. There is no accountability in the organizations or in the league. If you deliver on profit, 100%. But that's the only thing I could see Huck being profitable on. Let's look at the Flame era. The Flame era just came to an end. All of Flame's contracts are gone. Outlaws is going forward in a new direction. We no longer in the Flame era. I respect Flame. Flame came from the common group like I did. Flame was originally a player like Slasher and a lot of us at the very beginning. And then we switched to staff, commentator, lots of things. Flame became a really good manager. Flame was one of the best managers originally. Flame fell apart. And that was because of all the burden he had to share at Outlaws. I think that some of his signings were incorrect, but I still think that he was the best at the time. But his era is over. And I think that if the Outlaws want to progress moving forward, they need to end his era. I don't care if the player was acceptable. It's not the new general manager's team unless he makes the decisions. So that's general manager accountability. Let's talk about player accountability. Player accountability. In player accountability, there are players, and I this pisses me off so much in Overwatch. I, a lot of people don't notice it. There are players who are signed to fifty, sixty thousand dollar contracts that have not played a competitive game of Overwatch in two years. For two years, they have been sitting in comfort, getting paid, not contributing to the product. And I know for a fact from observing some scrims that they don't even go to scrims. They are expected to stream. They are expected to do their own thing and stay the fuck out of the way. That's not how this should work. And I think that the Players Association could intervene in this prospect. I think that every player should be mandatory to play at least two games a year if you're on the roster. I think that from a coach's perspective, if we look at the San Francisco Shock. The San Francisco Shock arguably have had the best coaching staff period in the last two years, along with two of the superstar rookies. But superstar rookies only go so far if you don't have a good coach. I think that the San Francisco Shock coaching staff being broken up and being sent to other teams is a good thing. I think it'll create more competitiveness. I also think that the San Francisco Shock are going to suffer from this. I think that other organizations are going to suffer from picking up the coaching staff because the product is different. This is not an issue for us to worry about right now. That's league progression. I think that with a player's association, a union, or anything on our end that applies pressure to Blizzard and to the owners at this point in time is very risky. If we have a shitty players association who only takes care of Owl, we will never have new talent come up. Why are people going to Apex, to Valorant, to all these other games? It is because they have a better shot of making it there than they have of making it into Overwatch League. And all of the issues I highlighted up to this, players not playing, people not performing, zero accountability... Players being quote unquote babied, all of that is into the product. 
I'll be blunt. The T2 system is a complete and utter fucking joke. Blizzard should be ashamed, and I'm amazed you have had any talent except Gator come out of that system. Any player, when I was coaching, I didn't find in fucking tournaments. I didn't find players through VODs. I found them in scrims, watching them play against my players, watching them play against me. Key player I want to highlight here is Dalton. When I first saw Dalton, Dalton was a Tracer one-trick. Dalton could only play Tracer, but he could play Tracer fairly well. Dalton has now expanded his hero pool, and in the span of two years, he has gone from T3 Tracer one-trick to being a staple in the contender scene. Dalton, in my opinion, is somebody who came up through the ranks. Just put it that way. He came up through the system. But Dalton, I don't think will ever make it into Overwatch League, and that hurts my heart. And the problem is, is because we are constantly struck by bias, zero accountability, overreactions, and delivering a shitty product. So, let's talk about the product now. Casters in Overwatch have way too much power over the direction of the product. They should never have had the direction of the product, and they should not be contributing to the vision of the product. The player is not being allowed... The accountability of being able to critique or display their vision of their product and it is all under the caster's thumb is completely and utterly broken i love all of the overwatch casters i actually do i genuinely love all of them i think they are smart i think they can deliver a product they want to deliver the wwe not a sport it's not hyper competitive i will be blunt there have been many a times where a caster has said a snide remark to a region, to a team, to a player, and ended a career by saying five to ten words. It's, there's, there's no accountability for it. The players have no right to fight that person for their opinion, and we put them in a platform where they can say it. There is no reason... That ZP, and I love ZP, don't get me wrong, I think ZP needed to be an owl a long time ago, and I think ZP is one of the better ones. If ZP were to say anything about Seagull's career, and Seagull suffered for it, ZP isn't doing his job. The job of a caster is to paint a picture that is neutral, and pushes the product in the direction that is the consumers want to hear. There are lots of times where casters will say Korea is a better region. And though that may be true, you cannot say that. Because the moment you say that, it becomes fact. You are the voice of the entire league. If we have a players association, the players association will get to rule your voice. Because your voice dictates their progression and career. I think that we do need to begin moving forward with this. I think that this is something that should have been worked on a long time ago. But I definitely think there is no accountability in the current structure. If a caster creates a bias or a caster uses statistics to push an agenda, they should be removed. It is the same for an organization. If an organization pushes a racial agenda or a country agenda, it needs to be addressed and removed. Now this gets me to talk to about Blizzard, our glorious dictator. I love Blizzard to death. I really do. I, I think Blizzard is one of the greatest game companies, and I think they are misguided right now. We have a lot of new blood coming into Blizzard. The old blood is gone. We went through a transition in 2018, 2019, and we're still going through that transition now. Blizzard's commissioner... Assistant Commissioner, Commissioner of uh, Contenders, and the Path to Pro. If your product sucks, you're failing at your job. And it is not the people below you. Because you were the person, you were the, you, you were the yes man. You were the person who gave the okay for everything. The fact that I can only name three to five major pros to come out of the T2 scene that have made it to Overwatch League that are OWL level players is a travesty. The fact that you don't invest in your T2 scene and your T3 scene is a complete and utter travesty. Your product is literally team deathmatch with an objective. That's what the shit you're giving to fans. And it's not okay. We are in a point where we want to create a narrative and tell a story during the season about players' struggles and their talents. 
And for some reason, when I watch Overwatch, when I watch Contenders, when I check in on my former players, it is literally just a fucking meme. We literally joke about T2 Omega Lull. We joke about NA scrims. We joke about fucking the Overwatch League structure and viewership. And the only way to address jokes is to get serious and fix them. In the current atmosphere of the game, if we are to address this before Overwatch 2 drops, we have to find a strong leader in the Players Association. The leader has to be willing to put the T2 and T3 players before OWL players. They have to be a collective voice that every player respects and understands their formulated thought. We have to have annual meetings. Players must attend meetings for the union. You have to put in more work. There is going to be a lot more work. So if you're doing 40 hours of scrims, 40 hours of practice a week, and you're in the Players Association, you're going to be doing 60 to 80 hours a week. If you're a retired pro and you want to take up that mantle and be ahead of the Players Association, I can think of two I would recommend, but I still don't think they would fight for T2 and T3 players. You could do it, and you would work probably 60 hours a week. And you would constantly be talking to the commissioner of the league and the owners association, talking to the owners. You would constantly be talking about the product you are trying to deliver. And that is something we have lost. The product we are trying to deliver is complete and utter horseshit. And that is why viewership is failing. That is why people are going to other games. All of this stuff has to be addressed. And the reason I bring all of this up and the reason I wanted to talk about it was if you do not play this carefully, you are walking through a minefield, any misstep, and this entire thing blows up for everyone. If the Players Association fails and has poor leadership, you effectively are killing Overwatch because the investors will leave. If the owners get together and the owners fuck up, we are going to be pushing WWE as a product. And the WWE as a product is very insulting to any athlete. When we look at Blizzard's perspective, Blizzard is delivering a game. The esports aspect is not their primary concern. And I will be blunt, when it comes to game balancing, we should not be balancing for the Overwatch League. Balancing for the Overwatch League hurts Blizzard's design process and hurts their actual product they are trying to deliver. A lot of players do not understand this. That is why main tank is the absolute worst role to play in League or uh, into Overwatch right now. And when you play main tank, you're asked to literally sit there and hold your shield up for five people so that they can shoot at other people. It is a terrible design, and it stems from the pro system. It's the seeds we sowed. It's one of the reasons why I'm a big advocate for triple DPS in a single tank. Let everybody play the game. But all of this stems from the product we are trying to deliver. A player's association has to have a voice in the product, not just a voice in how much I get paid by contract durations and all of this. You have to have a voice and want to be a part of the product delivery process. The casters fall under Blizzard. The owners and the staff fall under that category. The players are the third party. The three of us have to work together to deliver a product that is profitable and we all enjoy. We have to make concessions and we have to be willing to work together. If we cannot do this, it will blow up in our face and Overwatch will become a PvE game that Blizzard has no invested interest in as an esport. They could literally cash out and they could make it a PvE game. And how many of you would try and go to Valorant? How many of you would try to go to another shooter? How many of you would try to go back to the game you came from? You have to play this carefully. Think. Make sure you think. If you do not think and you do not play this carefully, everybody could lose everything. This is a very serious issue. And if you do play it correctly but you make mistakes... You could wind up with a dictator or somebody who does not share your vision and does not have your voice at best at heart. There are people in the scene actively who are conniving, 
fucking snakes in the grass and we all know they exist and if you put them in a position of power they will look out for me myself and i and my friendship circle you have to do this carefully think about who you're going to follow think about who you're going to be in charge think about it all because the otis is on you when you're doing this process make sure you think the big thing I wanted to point out real quick while I'm ending the video is if we look at the last Overwatch League season, half the teams had a sub-500 rating. So half of these teams should have uh, massive changes, which is fine. Half of the teams should have minor changes, which is fine. I think that there is a massive overreaction to teams that are 6 and 15 in a split or you know 2 and 19 in a split removing players because obviously they didn't get what they wanted then you have other teams that had issues that were narrated live on screen i'm going to be blunt dallas fuel blew up dallas fuel blew up because of management not being able to step in and resolve a conflict Arrow fell on the sword to protect his assistant because if he doesn't fall on the sword and protect his assistant, the whole system fails. And this stemmed from a player not wanting to do something. So if we have a player's association and a player outright refuses, he must have accountability. If we want to talk about the NFL, Colin Kaepernick, he made his stand, he made his choice. And a lot of people think what was done to him was wrong. But in the current climate, that is the choice he made, and that is what he must live with. So the player who quote-unquote fought the, the management and uh, the staff gets off scot-free, and the coaches die immediately. We cannot have that system and structure in place, and we must think about it going forward. We must collectively work as a group to deliver a product we all are happy about, and that can push everybody going forward into a profitable direction setting us up for overwatch 2 think about it please